Well, uh, guys, welcome in Rotterdam. Uh, we're glad to have you in Toffler tonight. <laughs> uh, Happy to be back. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, first of all, you have, a, you have kind of a relation with Rotterdam um, that most people don't know about, actually. Uh, and I found out about recently or before that, but I ask you about recently. Um, you, you said that you used to live in Rotterdam for a small amount of time and yeah. you, have, you have some history. Tell us about this because <laughs> most people don't know this. Uh, when I was, a, I was like, yeah, my late teenager times, um, I did something stupid what every kid does or I don't know, run away from home. <laughs> it was just too much for me. And by that time I was hanging out with a, with a, a rap group from Rotterdam called Supersonic. And there was a bubbling dance group called the Dino Girls. And that was back in the days when I used to hang and play at uh, Imperium in Rotterdam. Which is, which is number one hip hop bubbling Old school. Place from, like the urban place from. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. So I had really a, a, a huge connection to, to, to Rotterdam by, by, by my friends. So it was the only place where I said, you know what? Let's go there. So yeah, I came to Rotterdam and I was hanging here for a couple of months, but it was too rough for me and uh, nobody speaks my language. Rotterdam I mean, uh, was too rough for you? Yeah, too rough in meaning of, you know, um, it was the first time I ran away from home. So it, it, it was rough. I was missing home. I was missing my mom and uh, that, that was the rough moment. I, I have to say I experienced an amazing time. Uh, my, most of my friends came from Suriname. And um, they really welcomed me like I was one of, of, of them, you know, and, and their mothers and made food and everything. So there was no reason to leave. <laughs> but I left. I left because of my mom. I missed her. I had to go back. <laughs> and uh, do, do, you, do you remember which part of Rotterdam? No, man, I don't remember anything. No, no, no. I even now don't remember anything. I know when you drop me in the city center, I know where the train station is, and that's it. And then they even changed the train station. So I don't know. Nada. <laughs> I have history. I really have history, and and I performed here as well. I performed more in Rotterdam than in Amsterdam. I have to say, during my hip hop days, there was as I remember as well. I don't know the, the year when it was. At the uh, at the stadium uh, was Biggie Smalls, Mary J. Blige, Joe to see like the big big festival. I, I played there as a DJ and performed. So yeah, I have. No, nah, nah. like by that time, man, you need a camera for that yeah, shit. I don't yeah, have yeah. money for that. Ninety-two, yeah, it must be ninety-three, ninety-two, ninety-four, something like oh. this, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so you have your connection with Rotterdam. I have connection. That's why every time I come here, it's it's different, like going somewhere else. Even I don't know the city. Even I don't. Uh, most of my friends don't live here. They live in Amsterdam or New York, or they moved out, or I don't have connection to them. I feel whole. I feel cool here. I feel good. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, in that era as well, um, did you did you already play on your local dice, or you had another name? No. Dice C. I guess, dice right? C. That, that was your hip hop. Name. Yeah, man. <laughs> this was the name that you used to play before hip hop. Exactly. Anyway. Yes, everywhere, everywhere. Right. That was my name. Uh, it was, it was, I was Dice since even before I even thought about music. It was Dice. Because where did that come from? Um, I used to have a huge um, collection of Dice. <laughs> so rolling the Dice was my hobby. My grandfather used to play backgammon a lot. And, you know, I was just collecting them. I was fascinated by the forms, the colors. And it was just a cool thing to have as a kid. So I had a little tomato tin, a can, and there I was placing all of them, hiding them from my grandfather. And so in, in Arabic you call it sisbis. So it was sisbis, and then my uncles, they were super cool and everything. They were, ah, that, that's a, not a nice name, you dice. Uh -huh. So it was dice. And then later when my interest became for rap music and all that stuff, I'm like, wow, I got a nickname already. That's, that's cool. Yeah, exactly. That's my yeah, artist's name. Nickname. So it was Dice. And because all of my friends, they, don't, they call me Dicey, Dicey, Dicey. So it was C. Yeah. C. Okay, cool. cool, cool. <laughs> and when, when, when did you change it to Local Dice and why? I mean, I mean, we know that you started as a hip hop DJ and, and you, at some point you transformed, you discovered house, electronic music, and you changed your name as well to Local Dice. When, when was this moment and, and how, how did it come, how did it happen? When I was experimenting with house music or understanding this is house music, I mean by that time you played C.C. Peniston, you played uh, um, Soul to Soul and, 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 and 
name them all, uh, inner city and, and everything. And pe there are people called it the house already by that time. Man, that was for me soul music, you know, uh, house what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I had kind of these records, and I, I knew I, I had the, the Armin van Helden records, I had the Sneak records, and, and all that stuff. AV8, Armin van Helden was doing a lot of AV8. So there was a, a connection without knowing I'm gonna be there one day. But yeah, it started, you know, hip hop became a little bit lame during after the 90s, the gold 90s. It was not a real input for me. It became very commercial. The TV stations picked it up, the radios picked it up. And then all of a sudden, it was not, people used to come to hip hop because you had the record collection. And then people came and they knew Coolio, Gangsta's Paradise from Viva, and they're like, play Coolio. You're like, play what? You, you asked me to play? I mean, that was so different. And many other things, it became very violent and, and there was so much and I was just fed up of my moment there. And I was experimenting with house and, and electronic music without knowing what it is. And it was a wide spectrum. I mean, techno, come on, small word, phew, huge like that. Until now, a lot of people don't know what it is. Um, so I was experimenting, and there was a club called La Roca, uh, the, where I, uh, La Roca, Germany, not in oh, Belgium. Yeah, 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 no, no, they, they took it. It was in, in Germany, in Dusseldorf. And they had house music nights where they had Bad Boy Bill, Roger, uh, George Morel, uh, Eddie Amador, everybody played there. All the big names by that time played in this club. So, and I had my hip hop night as well there. And then, yeah, I was experimenting and there was this night called Boogie Nights. I, I called it Boogie Nights and it was on a Wednesday. Um, and I was like saying, you know what? I play all night long and I start with soul, funk, going to hip hop go into house music and end up with techno, which I call techno by that time. Everything. And the people who were with me were, it was a small club. It was a very open-minded people. And by that time, I noticed that a lot of people from our hip hop crowd moved already away. They went to after hours and this. So they were catched by the electronic music. So I had a problem then because then I became slowly a pro uh -huh. and I had a certain crowd following me because it was Dice, C, and I didn't play hip hop or less and less hip hop or no hip hop at all. So it was a little bit dangerous, difficult, you know, I needed a name. And it was that time when I went to Ibiza and I just, hey, I was loco, I was crazy, I was going insane on that parties because it, it was a, a new world for me and I loved it. And then people started to call me, you loco, you loco, you loco. Yeah, and there was the scene at Space, which I don't want to white out now, everybody knows. Um, there it happened that, that, that security guards called me, hey loco, and my friends dies, loco, dies, loco, dies. That's my name. Uh, Boom. There, there was also like the Eureka moment that you really found like, okay, the name, I, I want to leave the hip-hop era behind me a little bit. This, this was the moment where was it was the moment. Like, this is the next phase, you realize. Late 90s, like, but it was a dangerous move because uh, I was quite successful in, 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 in hip-hop and in, in, in the scene that I was doing, in the thing that I was doing in the DJing. And um, I had to go to a new thing, to a new place, start from zero, start from nowhere. So yeah, it was tough, tough years, tough years. And nobody accepted me as a house DJ. They're like, yo, are you coming? I don't know for what, you know? But I guess you're accepted now. <laughs> I think many, so, many years a little later. bit. <laughs> <laughs> many, many years later, I think everybody... Do you have any connection with your hip hop uh, people from the day? Oh yeah, are oh yeah. Still connected or oh yeah. Like, okay, that's no, 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 no. There was a time where I wanted to leave it behind me. I think it happened to everybody, you know, when you start to play with a PlayStation, you don't go to a Nintendo anymore, you know? Uh, it's, it's, but then after years, you discover the Nintendo back and you're like, actually, it's, it's cool. So yeah, I, 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 I'm, I had to disappear for a while, but I never left my people from day one. It was always, always behind me. Um, some of them till now come to my parties. Um, I have people here, uh, Glaze, uh, everybody knows Glaze. Uh, st 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 still down with Glaze. 
uh, Kooli D, uh, some artists from here. I have connection to my hip hop guys in Berlin and Munich and Hamburg. It's still, I'm still down with them. Not like it used to be because most of them are also techno heads now or they go out different. When I go to Stuttgart, uh, the 0711 crew, Stachy and all the guys, I mean, still connected. I think you as an artist now kind of embrace your hip hop influences and your house techno influences and it made you like the complete package that you are now. I think if I hear you DJing, you know, you can hear that you can hear your influences and I, I, I think you embrace them both. Do you feel it the same? Now, yes. Like it's not like you're, no, you know, you're no hip hop anymore, you're a techno DJ. Or whatever. I think it's a full package now, but you embrace everything and it's one complete package. I was scared in the beginning. In the beginning, I wanted to hide it a lot. Because uh, I'm, I'm like, you know, as a, as a techno, a tech, it's hard to use this term by that time. As an electronic DJ, um, having, coming with baggies, came, coming the way you are, the people already looked at you weird, you know. I mean, even now these days people could not imagine this, but it was like this by that time, you know. And um, especially with who I was, a lot of people knew me. It was not, I was not a nobody. People knew me, knew me who I was in Germany. It was difficult, you know. So I had to leave everything behind, you know. Like I said, I was fed up. But you know, you can't leave something behind what you are, what you are. You lived it. You, you, I grew up as a hip hop kid, you know. I grew up with, with, with old school hip hop. I grew up talking like that, behaving like that, dressing like that, living like that. You can't get, a, get rid of it, you know. And in the first years, I was like maybe a, a, not a puppet, but I was like fighting. Something inside me was fighting. I couldn't put a hip hop vocal over an electronic beat. Damn, I wish I did it by that time, you know? And then I was seeing the people like, and, but, but I didn't follow the Americans that much to say Kenny Dobe, Armin Van Helden, Sneak, all these names, Todd Terry, because they lived, this is their style, this is who they are. They are not hip hop or electronic. They did, they did just music, they're artists. I was too young to understand it. Coming from hip hop, you're too young and not open minded enough to understand where to go. And yeah, and, and, and then, then comes the Ibiza time. Man, Ibiza, there is no hip hop at all. You have to be really calm and easy, going, yo, what's up? It's like, Ugh. <laughs> So, and, and I was shy, you know, I was, I was a new kid on the block there. I was shy, I had to earn my respect, I had to work hard to be where, where I wanted to be and what, what, I didn't even know where. So I just played music and I have to say, all that time, all my history, lead me, like you said, to who I am now. And this and is like a one plus one is three. Perfect, it's like a, perfect. It's like the package. Perfect. Now these days when I drop a hip hop vocal, I'm never ever somebody gonna say uh, only because it's in or he dressed like this. Still have people, but they don't know who I am then, you know? Yo, it's me, you know? I can't change, nothing. And it's not that I'm opening now and letting it all out. It's you just authentic. coming, you know? And that's it. And DJing, I never mixed on the one. It was always the two, you know? So <laughs> what do you want from me, you know? <laughs> House heroes, except for Armand van Helden, maybe, and like people that kind of gave you like an idea, like okay, this is where I want to go as a house artist or techno artist. Who were at that moment like your inspiration? Um, like I said, my first contact was the Van Heldens and Sneaks and the X Mix gang, because I felt the connection yeah. somehow. The homeboys like me. They're also kind of in a hip hop vibe. The way the exactly yeah. learning or something unreachable and under, not to understand what it is was Plastic Man. That was <laughs> somewhere else, you know. Um, DJing, it was in Germany, Sven Veit. He's the man, he was the one who was the perfect DJ who played. Later I discovered Danny Tenaglia who was like Mr. Sven Veit in the United States. And uh, I think I never followed somebody or I just get inspired by certain things. Music wise, when I, the moment I discovered uh, Covades by G-Man, the moment I discovered Basic Channel, uh, I knew, okay, 
This is it. And I have to say, I listen to these tracks totally different. I, I listen to them as a hip-hop kid. I listen to the, the 909s, the 808s, the machines, the, 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 the drum computer, you know. The, it's not an MPC, but it, it, it is, you know, something which I interpret completely different in my head, you know. It's funny because the two tracks you're mentioning now are also already, like it's very dubby, so there's like easy to get lost in it. That's it. if you interpret it in another way. It's totally. It's more like four dimensional. And this, is, this is what I loved. You said it, to get lost in somewhere. And the dub, the dub is reggae, man. And everybody got reggae in his blood, you know, and perfect. So, and when did you realize, because you had this big hip-hop career before and then you started in house techno, when at that moment did you realize, like, okay, I, this is, this is going to be my life right now, this is going to be my DJ career? Like, you know, From the first from? moment. Yeah, right? Yeah, away. man, I'm kamikaze in these things, right. man. I did it with hip-hop, I finished school, I had to finish school uh, three years late, uh -huh. uh, but I had to finish something because I promised my mom, she's like, just get the paper in your hand. It doesn't matter how dirty it looks like. Just get it. And then, I'm not happy what you're doing, but... Yeah. So I did it, and I, I dropped everything, man. I, nev I never had a real job or something. And I never made an, an uh, learning what to do. Everything was just small jobs. I was working in a restaurant. I was working here, there. And uh, yeah, everything I do, I believe in it. I, I always believed in my dreams. I had a dream and not a plan, and I follow and stick to that dream. And I think you Look can, dream. you can, you can, you can be who you want. You know, you don't have to be in New York or in the United States. You can if you want. And I believed in it, and I worked hard. And I miss no man, no man, because when you start to be afraid, then you might do other ways and go other directions. But I was not afraid. I, I knew I was going to make it somehow. Make it? What means make it? Make it is to pay my fucking rent and, 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 and survive, you know? And everything else was then hard work and was the creme de la creme because I was like, wow, man, when, when seeing through shadows and all these records came out, I didn't know where I was or where it's going or, you know? It was a crazy, like, two years period. I was hiding in Ibiza. I had no clue. I had no clue. I had no clue. For me, you were in the bubble. And that was the moment where you work hard and you do stuff and you create something. But you're in a bubble and you do it. Until now, you know, I always, I put myself in the bubble and every gig is for me same important like the gig of last day or tomorrow. It doesn't matter, small club, big club or whatever. There is no importance. Important is every gig. And every gig I try to give 100%. It's not possible all the time. You might tire it, you might it's technical sound problems or whatever, but focus. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, well, I, I will discuss the, the releases that kind of like positioned you, you know, like boom, here's Loco Dice, you know, the really big releases, like a really big career over the last couple of years. And then at some point you started Desolat, <laughs> with Martin Butry. First release kicked off by Dogfire, which was a big, big track. <laughs> and um, but how, how did, how, when did you decide? Like you were like you know sitting comfortable with the biggest labels at the time. I mean, Minus was like huge at that time. You know, Ovum, uh, Cocoon. Then then you decided like, okay, I'm gonna do my own label right now with Martin Butcher. How did that happen? We left Germany, going to New York to have the album Seven Dunham Place in mind, but. Actually, running a label, it was Martin's idea. It was not even my idea. I was, what, label? I knew, I mean, I was not afraid paying a lot of money, but I knew it's gonna kill you somehow, because I hear the stress and, and the work and, and... Especially because you're already releasing on the best labels of that, you know? So there was no intention like, oh, I want a label to put my music on or something. No, I was like, a label? And then Martin just looked at me. I always had hip hop style. Those records that nobody have. It was like I had the Dub Fire record, which was laying down for a year. <laughs> and the history of that is we tried. I, I thought it's a cocoon record, but I don't know if they ever listened to it or what they did with that. So it bounced back on me. And I had the Danny Ocean track. This young kid, the skater, who came to me after my DC 10 set, and he's like, Here's the CD, you're gonna love it. 
And there was then the, the Rosario Intonolo track, which, which I get from Marco Carolla by that time, who gave it to me. And he's like, look, this is your sound. You might play this one. And I had these three records. And Martin was like, look, you have a collection. Don't you want to share it with the people? Don't be an egoist. I'm like, really? Yeah? I was thinking and thinking. And I had a lot of time in New York the first two months because our equipment didn't arrive. So. Our equipment didn't oh, arrive, yeah. okay. <laughs> it was, uh, wasn't customs, you know, and right. we planned it wrong. So it was two months smoking and waiting, <laughs> you know, okay, let's do a label, you know. And really? then I was, I was, it was the time as well I started to uh, record all my records because I switched from, re from vinyl to digital because yeah. I was fed up losing gigs because I lost records. So yeah, I saw that logo, Serato <laughs> was that time, yeah, I'm like, exactly. man. Man, and, and I remember we always used, when we hang out in the after hour or something, let's, we are so desolat, let's go desolat. Desolat was everything, it was bad, good, weird, nothing. It was standing for nada, you know, it was, desolat was, could be everything, you know. Okay, and I always need to interpret the desolat as like lonely. No. Like somewhere desolat, but it, it, was, it was, this is what I wanted to ask it you had, about, because in desolat, the feeling that you have in desolat record, it's, it's like a real family. You have a really tight knit of artists, community, yeah, working with each other. So it never really made sense, like Desolat and this whole family feel. But now, okay, Desolat. Nothing. Nothing to do with no Nothing. Things. Nothing to do with all it. Could be negative, positive. It's a word okay. for us to put in the mouth. Oh, that's Desolat. Right. We are Desolat. You so Desolat. desolat. <laughs> hey, there it is, desolat. you know that's Desolat. And cool. and the rings are three rings. That means three meanless. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's, it's desolate, desolate yeah. but it's tight. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and that's desolate. And then when they started to make it professional, you have to explain. You have to. I don't have to explain ah, shit, yeah. man. Two homies that. met in New York, uh, moved to New York, and they created a label. You know. Spontaneous. The best. The best ideas are always spontaneous. Bum. And then it was done. And then I, you know, I never had fear of Dubfire asking. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like Dubby, I'm doing a new label. You're gonna be the first release. Dubfire was like, yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so he, he made a track inspired by your DC Exactly. Dance. It was two tracks. It's Rip and Cage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and I never understood that there's two tracks. For me, it was one track. Yeah. Maybe I never listened. Yeah, it well. <laughs> it's one track. He's yeah. like, no, it's two tracks. I'm like, no, it's one track. He's like, okay, whatever. Um, he, it, it's, it's so funny. He, he, I, I know Dubby and Sharam for a long time, touring with Timo and everything. I remember meeting them in Washington and I was actually hanging with Sharam more than with Dubfire. But then every time I was chasing these guys, I'm like, come to DC-10, come to DC-10, to Danny, to everybody, come to DC-10, come to DC-10. When DC-10 was not famous, when DC-10 was under, under, underground, under, underground, under, underground. And it was the first person who showed me DC-10 was Mark Spoon, uh, rest in peace. And, and I was like, you gotta come, you gotta see it, you gotta see it, come on, come on. And then, yeah, Dubfire came, and he was like, oh, lost. And I had the, the DD6, the digital delay, and wah, 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 wah. that was my only effect that I had. There was no controllers, no computers, nothing by that time. Well, and he had an amazing time, and then we went to Cocoon, and then he was technonized, you know. Uh, Dubfire came back. <laughs> and, it was a big thing for him and, and he's like, he came back to me and he's like, yo, I did this track inspired by a gig and la 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 and I'm like, yeah, cool. But you know, I was, it's summertime, my head somewhere else. He gave me the record, I listened to it, I'm like, I like it, I play it. And then, yeah, what are we going to do with that track? And, and I'm like, well, I think, cocoon. <laughs> Like I said, I don't, I don't know what happened. And then I, when he was in New York, when I was in New York, he was in New York, he did his, uh, I think it was the record release party of, uh, uh, the label release party of Cytec, or I don't know what it was, but or it was a deep dish, I don't remember. And they played in this former strip club in Manhattan, and he invited me. And when, the moment I came in, he was playing Ribcage. And I came, I'm like, wow, that's a badass track, what is that? Like, are you fooling me or what, man? That's the track I gave you since a year. I'm like, oh, That's oh. Where it all made sense. Bam. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> so that was it. And in, in a week or something, we created the label. We had three, three releases, and everybody believed in us, Discomania and everything. We did everything from New York. And I found Vladimir in, in, in the record store. I'm like, oh, you want to work? He's like, yeah, cool. 
everything was easy. I'm like, well, it's not that difficult. No, it's great, especially <laughs> when, you have, when it just comes spontaneous. You know, you just grew into it. happy accidents. And that's Desolat. And what I wanted with Desolat is just being a hip hop kid, you know, gather around a crew of cool people, yeah. of nice people, friends, not casting, no. just happens. The first person was the queen, Teeny. I met her in a party in Munich. She played as an opener, completely nervous. And I was like, wow, I love that music. And it took a year or two or three until she came in our team, you know, or become a Desolat artist. So the idea, slowly, slowly, Hector I knew even before Desolat and, and Guti came because of Desolat, uh, Livio and Robbie because of this. Livio, Livio gave me his music in the bathroom in La Mamia in Costanza in Romania. Yeah, he's like, I remember having his computer on his lap, putting the stick in, giving me the stick. Oh, wait, I forgot two more tracks. Wait, tick, tick, tick. And yeah, no, we were sitting there. It's the only place where it was quiet, you know what I mean? And it was like, yo, wait, wait, wait. And, and people were like, what is, are these guys doing? Like exchanging music? <laughs> It was, yeah, it was insane and they gave me so much good stuff and like I said, Guti, I knew Guti did this piano track with um, Damien Schwartz, is it possible? And I'm like, wow, talent. I met him and he came from Argentina straight to Dusseldorf and that's, there's a lot, you know, a lot of people are like uh, asking how can we get in the crew. Natural, organic. Just yeah. happen, you know. No, I think people from outside really see there's a lot and especially when you're DJing as well, you know, they see that, you know, the, the, the impression we get is like, you know, you're very, you're very uh, uh, used or, read, you know, you're, you're, you really want warmth and friends, you know, you want to be connected with friends, you, wanna, you know, you want to you have your family around you, you know? So important. You know? I've seen too many artists going alone a lonely way. I never want to do this. For me, sharing is important. And if I have the opportunity and I see a talent and he's close to me and everything is cool, the vibe is cool, why not sharing? Why not giving him the opportunity to let him play on my stage, you know? It's and beautiful mentality. It's, and it's all my artists made me somehow because I was playing Leave Your Robbie's shit before, before even it came out. I was playing Hector's stuff before he even become Hector, uh, uh, become uh, our Hector on Desolat. I was playing Guti's album up and down before it even was Guti's album, you know? And this is the sweet thing. So there is a connection and all of them are their own artists. They are not, we are not similar, but we fit. And that's the thing. We can, one plays at the beginning, one plays at the end, me in the middle, or me in the beginning there. It fits, it's a puzzle which fits. You know, there is no, Hector doesn't play like Robert Dietz or like this. They all play different and that's a great thing. And I think this is what keeps us alive till now, maybe. Yeah, actually I wanted to ask like, what, <laughs> what makes, what, what makes uh, someone, there's a lot for you, but you already explained it. It's just a feeling and it, it's really organically. And, um, organic, man. All right. Back to the DJ part. Um, you have a very unique DJ style, you know what I said before, you know, it's like you, you already accepted your hip hop roots in your house and techno vibes from now and this is you. Um, but you have a very, you know, you have a very specific way of mixing, it's really raw, it's <laughs> energetic, it's fun, you know, you're like a real real character. But for you as a DJ or as a dancer, what makes a good DJ for you, like from your perspective? Uh, you see someone and you'll be like, okay, this, you know, is it his record choices, is it technique? I mean, what, what makes a really good DJ for you personally? It's all of that. It's, it's, he got to catch me. I don't look... How do we catch you? Oh, he, ca he catch me by a, a fucking good set. He catch me by a fucking good set, but that's not enough. Then who are you? I mean, classify a DJ, you know, it's like... If, if, if I'm not a DJ and I just want to go to a party, I would go for the music. But if I, not only the music, then the next step is if I like his music, who is that person? If he's a dick, I can't deal with that shit, man. <laughs> but if, you, if he's sympathetic, if, if, it's, if he's cool, then it, the next step arrives, you know, and then the next step. And I think all the people on the dance floor are, are, are choosing this. I'm coming from hip hop, you look to the DJ. Yeah, but you don't stand in the DJ and you make the picture. You look to the DJ. What is he doing? What is the next move? And if he's in a good mood and he's rocking the crowd, you rock. You rock. So there are two things. Sometimes I want to listen only to good music and leave me alone. But sometimes I want to socialize and, 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 and so, or sometimes I just want to rock. So I need somebody to entertain me, you know? And a DJ has to give all of these kind of things. But it doesn't mean when a DJ 
when, when a DJ only got a good record selection and a bad technique, doesn't mean he's a bad DJ. He could be also a good DJ. I think it's I think a difficult it's, thing, you know? I think it's more important. Personally, I believe it's even more cooler to have a good taste with a bad technique instead of the other way around. Because I think so too. Who represents you. I, I think so too. You choose, you know, that's how you represent your own character and your own. But. Character. I mean, technique you can learn. But okay. I give the guy who played bad music, but he got an amazing technique, I give him crudos, I give him yeah, props. Give yes, man, yeah. yes, man. There's <laughs> always, I had this joke with Eric Murillo all the time, you know? Nobody can beat yeah. Murillo on the CDJ, man. <laughs> but sometimes his music, he's like, I'm like, yo, I don't like this music, you know? <laughs> True, yeah, yeah, I mean, totally on that. This technique is but crazy. looking at him, yeah. or you know, sometimes, I'm coming from hip hop, but all the turntablism guys, can you listen to that six hours? I can't, man. There's too much for my head, you know? But respect, they are amazing DJs because they got skills, you know? So it's a difficult one, you know? And for, uh, what, what, does a, uh, what makes a good track for you to play out? What do you look for in a track to DJ? <laughs> a track listen can live... <laughs> A track can live in my set once, or a track can live in my sets for life. So, you, you, so there's no distinction between maybe I listen. once or maybe forever? I, mean, I listen to the track, and it know kicks. Before, like maybe I'm, I can play this one, and that's it. Or yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I know already this is a track I need to play on the festival. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, but I love everything what I play. Don't get me wrong. Awesome. Yeah. yeah? Okay. But there's a track. These days, everything is fast. It's not like back in the days. Back in the days, to release something on a record, it got to be a lifetime record. Yeah. Yeah, you're putting it on wax. These days, is a track. It's a, I play it, I play it next week, but then it's gone. But you already know this before. Yeah, That's I feel it. I feel it. And, and, and all of my people around here, they know me. I'm working hard every weekend. I'm, listen, I'm listening almost every day to music. So do you see your tracks more as a tool, like part of the local dance set? Or Some of them, yes. Yes. Some of them, yes. Like Some of them, yes. Sometimes a track one. needs an introduction. Yeah. These days, those kids, they don't do intro, outro. Yeah. It's a bomb. It's yeah. there. Bomb. Yeah. Destroy yeah. the shit out of it. Yeah. These days, with all the techniques, I can easily skip in the track. I can make it live. Before, I used to spend ages with, with the programs to cut it right, to edit it, to, oh my God, man. And, and then it was not tight, and then you mix up, fuck up the mix. It's so many. These days, you can do everything live. I can do everything, you know? I listen to it, I say, wow, these six bars, seven bars, dope. Yeah. But then, not my, not my thing. And I can make this track big just with this. Or I make the other track, because when I listen to this, to this thing, I'm like, okay, the one that I have sleeping all the time, if I play this before, it goes. Or I can go down deep with that, or I find an introduction to play this kind of track, you know? It's a puzzle, man. That's the exciting thing about DJing, selecting, digging, searching, finding. That's cool, so you try. Actually, this is kind of encouraging for people if they want to send you music. That you know, some DJs they're like, well, I don't like the track, or you know, I don't respond. Never mind. But probably you are like looking for the parts that you like. We have it. We have it on. We have it on Desolat. Sorry, uh, we have Desolat and Desolat X. Yeah. Desolat X is the is club that banger. Difference? That's yeah. the club banger. That's the club banger. That's the club banger. This this is like all most of the tracks. Some of the tracks are Great. loops. Yeah. They are just a badass loop. Okay. And maybe it gets up and down, and then okay. again, you know. This is the I keep it for the people free to choose. You have people who love this kind of loops. This loop works on an after hour because it's not a lot of movement. It's just a badass loop and it's the head banging. It's like in hip hop. You used to have those beats, you know, boom, boom, you bang. And then you have the other beats where you have to dance, you know. And this is it. And, and, and I make the difference on Desolat X. It, it's, it is something where... Um, where people can play with. I give you the freedom to play with this track. The artists give you the freedom. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just delivering, you know? And for me, most of the Desolat tracks are songs. They are finished somehow. Or 
also from the style. It's sometimes very weird what's going on in my head and I can't really explain it all the time. But if you're listening, well. if you're listening to the Desolat releases, yeah. Yeah, if you listen to the Desolat releases and then you listen to all the Desolat X releases, yeah. you might understand. Makes <laughs> no, it makes sense. <laughs> Definitely. Cool. Um, before you get on stage and DJing, are you, are you, I mean, you have obviously many, many years of experience. When you, you said you know every gig you take as a one hundred percent shot, but are you, do you still get nervous? Oh yeah. How do you prepare for? How, how do you how do you how do you handle things before the gig? I mean, are you are you fully focused? Or yeah, you yeah. Take, like, relaxation to not get too nervous. How do you? How do you get I mean, I always go to bed before my gig. Yeah? <laughs> I always go to sleep. Okay. I have early dinners and then I, at least an hour must be. Crap, but really, like, I'm going to bed. It's like, you know what I mean? Going to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, going to bed. I'll not be jumps, but going to bed, you know? And this is my ritual, you know? I wake up, I have an ice cold shower, and slowly get a coffee and slowly get ready for the show. It is a show. I take it serious, you know? And then I take it serious, but I don't take it serious on the, other, on the same side. I come to the club and I'm just excited, you know, new, new people, sometimes a new club, new sound system. You try to re concentrate. What is the DJ playing before you? Where, where is everybody? What's going on? Hey, how, how you doing everybody? What's going on? And then, yeah, slowly, slowly. And inside I'm nervous. My stomach is doing this here. Everybody thinks it's an easy thing. Yo, it's not easy, man. I'm going to perform in front of 300 people. It's more scary than performing in front of 10,000 people, you know? <laughs> At least you, can, you have a wall. And then, yeah, and then the spotlight, all the cameras, everything, man, you know how it is, yeah. you know, it's, it's, but I have to deal with that, it's okay. No, and it's like you have all the like two different ways, like maybe uh, one person, you, you know, one DJ knows he's going to get nervous, so he's going to drink or like smoke, nah. forget about the nervousness, or the other one is going to take the you know, preparation, like, okay. Nah, I is. take it as it comes, you know? yeah. take it as it comes. Might be, yeah, let's have a chupito, all right. Sometimes it's like, yo, let's have a smoke. Sometimes it's like, no, I don't do anything. Leave me alone, water. I don't know, it depends. I, I, I chose to be an electronic DJ because it's open-minded, because it's about the vibe, it's about how you feel and what feelings are you transporting. That's the beautiful thing and that's why I'm still loco dice. I'm still there where I am because I am able, I have the freedom to do it. Today, I feel a little bit moody. I'm playing moody. Yeah. yeah, but then all of a sudden I'm happy, yeah, yeah. you know, and that's a beautiful thing. And people just go with you or the people guide you to a certain sound. You're in together. We, we, I can't do it alone. I need, I need certain things to it. <laughs> What's your most embarrassing moment in your DJ career until now? Oh, my DJ career, embarrassing. Phew. Like taking the wrong needle from the, the wrong needle from the wrong I don't call this embarrassing. I don't some no. <laughs> no. A no, DJ fail is not embarrassing. No. Well, there is a DJ mix error, or there is like you take the wrong. No, I yes. uh, this all yeah, it all happened to me. Yeah. Taking the needle away, stopping the record, uh, <laughs> <laughs> mixing wrong. It's a natural thing. If if people call this embarrassing, I'm sorry with you guys, but hey, come on, <laughs> I, I don't call this embarrassing. Embarrassing. Yeah, there is one moment which was really embarrassing. Yeah, but it was not on DJ set. We were in Colombia, in Cartagena. We were sitting on a big table. I remember Dabi was there, a lot of DJs. And I had a broken chair. And I was sitting on that chair, leaning back, pum! That was embarrassing, man, because everybody was laughing, everybody was pointing on you. That was embarrassing. <laughs> what else is embarrassing? I had another one on stage when you just trap over something and I learned, you know, I'm from hip hop. I know how it is on stage. Follow the fucking yellow or red line. Don't go left or right. It goes wrong. It can be nowhere land. It can be something. Eh? That's the thing. Just follow the way. Yeah, this, this, this happened to me for sure that I fall on stage. But nah, nah, a fail. Yes, I'm cool. I don't know. Yeah. Besides the music part, uh, what are your hobbies next to the music side of local lives? What, what are you doing? What's your biggest hobby in your private life? Hip hop. <laughs> Hip hop. Still music. Football. Football. Oh, I'm addicted, man. Yeah. See me later on the on the ticker. Right. Checking out, and it's 
it's not only Juventus, it's Fortuna, it's, it's Arsenal, it's, it's uh, Portuguese. Man, I just uh, eat it all in. I love football. I, I love good matches. Um, I love shopping. <laughs> Which we're going to do <laughs> later. We some later. Nice <laughs> Are you showing me your belly? I got no belly, man. I love eating. <laughs> my tour manager loves eating. Uh, my family. Um, my friends, you know, I um, just love to hang out with my friends and everything what I'm doing is a hobby actually so far. Yeah. There is nothing which is annoying or something at the moment. Cool. Uh, just the last part, which is more Toffler related or Rotterdam related. Um, you, you, you played here before for Toffler in 2001 or 2011, the Under 300 tour. Um, so you're, you're known with Toffler as a club. Um, and with Rotterdam a bit as a city. Do you experience difference, differences between like Rotterdam and Amsterdam? Or uh, can you say like something specific about Rotterdam or, or maybe about Toffler like that you know that's going to be different than in Paris or in London or in Spain? Yeah, or let's keep this Amsterdam Rotterdam thing away. Well, uh, 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 yeah. In the past in, 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 in hip hop they call it Gangsterdam or Rotterdam, uh, you know? <laughs> Got it's Amsterdam cool. homies coming tonight. Uh, <laughs> they're gonna say it. They're gonna say it the whole night. Look, yeah. we came all the way to yeah, Rotterdam. Gonna You're gonna. I'm gonna show you. You're gonna. They're gonna be like every hour. Hey, and we came true. all the way. You know just what it means. Yeah, like, oh. <laughs> Of course. Everything is in Amsterdam, so it's quite special to see people coming over. Here. For me, like I said, I got history with Rotterdam, yeah. so my heart is here. You know, um, I feel even I have a lot of friends in Amsterdam and everything, and I'm cool with them, and, and, and I have the same feeling or relation like I have here to Rotterdam. I feel that Rotterdam is more, how I say it, maybe working class, more, 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 yeah. re, more not real, more. More different. They're they're rougher. They're rougher. You know. They're they're more open. And 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 in Amsterdam, I think because Amsterdam got the privilege that they have everybody there every week. It's one superstar comes after the other. One talent comes after the other. It's it's quite you know. And they're more laid back, more chill. They're not an, an Amsterdam kid will never come. Yo, what's up? But Rotterdam, it's like this. You know, they come. Hey, uh, uh. yeah, I have this feeling maybe somehow. Maybe people see the other way around. Maybe like Amsterdam, they like to be like more. Hey, hey you know. Yeah, I see a different. Rotterdam are more like introvert because they're more from the working class. But mm -hmm. it's interesting to see. Maybe because I, I'm I'm coming from the same part. You know, yeah, maybe so it's like, like this. Vibe. I don't know. I don't know. I I had this vibe. But like I said. It got to do with my history to Rotterdam. That's why it is like that. And I never had the chance really to hang out longer in Amsterdam or something. And I have so much friends in Amsterdam. It's crazy, you know? But I hang more with my Amsterdam friends outside than in yeah, Amsterdam, you know? It's crazy. Cool. Um, I think uh, we covered most of the things, and especially, <laughs> you know, it being full circle. Like you coming, you know, you having your history in Rotterdam. And, and, and you know, preferring like prefer to play Toffer, for example, like you did to Under 300 too. So you're known with the club, you know. You, you I know, know that. what to expect. So so yeah, we're gonna look forward to. Me too, and man. I'm really excited. I think we only have one question left. Sure. From the people from Facebook. They have All some right. Questions. Rico, do we have? It's his phone. Uh. He has some people on Facebook to ask you some questions. Wow. Chose one question. All right. The question from someone on our Facebook page: Is there a difference between the energy that you get from your house and techno crowd now, in comparison to the energy that you got from your hip hop crowd before? Yes, baby. What's the difference in energy? Now I'm getting it because um, I mean now the music is different now. The music is more jack now. The music is more yeah. ass kicking. Yeah. You know, I was going through a lot of cycles in my life or in, in, in the music uh, past of, of my electronic music past. 
I, I was, I started with this jacking songs and in hip house, but then I was very deep because I was shy. I was playing a lot of deep house. And then I was very Balearic because of Ibiza. And then I discovered again, and then I discovered the real techno. And then I was not shy anymore. And I was pulling out the 909 kick, you know, bum, da da da, bum, da da da. And it's, it's, it's a cycle, you know, it, it happens. It depends on the mood. But now I'm, I'm I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling, I never felt so positive and so good like now. And, and I think now the, the talk between wax and digital is gone, the talk about this and that is gone, and people just come and club, you know, and they party. And I think also the Ableton time is gone, the experiment, everything is now more laid back. You can feel it in the music, and people are more open-minded now. And, to themselves, like the shoulder out of Yeah, as well. and it's, it's a wide spectrum, you know, it, it's great. And, and right now, I'm, I'm happy with the music, I have to say. There's a lot of bullshit, but there's a lot of amazing, amazing music as well. And, and it's a good time, you know. And when I have to say, now most of the people who come to my parties, they know what they get, you know. And, and it's a good party, it's a cool party. We, we go crazy all. You know, there was a time there was five DJs playing almost similar but different and people thought he's playing like him and if I go to that DJ I get the same vibe. No, it's not. You know, and now it's like everybody got his position and that's great, you know, because we need it diverse. You need it. We need it different. Otherwise the scene will go down. And yeah, tonight we're gonna have a cool party, but it's not it's a badass jam, whatever it is. Cool. Cool. So, you know, it's yeah, but you, it's man, it's your yeah, home it's turf. Really <laughs> I mean, Rotterdam is really, you know, they're local. I'm really, so really especially good. last time when I came, I didn't play that long. Your Facebook monkeys, you know that. Yeah? A lot of people diss me for that. <laughs> really? but yeah, because you remember, it's an under 300 tour. I think yeah. a lot of people, or maybe the promoter by that time, didn't explain to people that much. We had a conversation yeah. about it, because I played just two and a half hours or something. Yeah. It was you, Michelle, and everybody. The concept was, I play vinyl, I want a party, I want the club feeling back. So yeah, yeah. I play two hours, and then I party with you. I didn't go home to a hotel, sure, I was at the bar, drink. drinking, having a good time. And that was a... Even at the bar, you were serving Man, drinks. I was serving drinks. Serving drinks you know, a lot of people misunderstood it. They thought they go, it's gonna come a marathon or something. A marathon, don't get me wrong. I don't plan it. No, it's spontaneous. It's spontaneous. Everything happened the way it happened, you know? But, hey, that's you, you were mentioning, but I don't even realize that people were talking about it. Like, oh, I, oh, even, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't realize. Yeah, I had people I there that night. They were disappointed, like, what, you oh, mean really? you're over? I'm like, well, I'm over, yeah. I, mean, I came to have a good time with you. It's under 300. We made the club smaller and everything. Yeah. I'm not egoistic playing now here 400 million years. I'm like, yo, <laughs> there's a cool other DJs, and I want to have a good yeah, time, yeah, man. Super! That was you, that was Michelle, and that was Jeff, my boy. Is he here tonight? He's here, he's here. Yeah. yeah. He's here, he's, he's, I think he's one of your biggest Rotterdam fans. So. That's my boy. I love him. Yeah, I love him. And there will be a lot of Rotterdam people really, really looking Hello. forward. And once again, we're really happy to have you here. Thanks for and, having uh, me. You know, let's look forward to a great night. In let's go shopping first. Thanks for being here. Yeah, <laughs> Record shopping and shopping. Yeah.